So I'm John Barney. I am Planning Manager for Parks and Recreation and Open Space for Bernalillo County. And welcome tonight to the District 5 Commission District Meeting for the Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Master Plan. So this part of the presentation is really focused on District 5 projects and it's also focused on the Q&A session that we'll have uh, so that everybody in the community can see and hear uh, the concerns that were raised here this evening. Um, the, there, as this slide, I don't know if you saw it pop, there's two uh, neighborhood community areas, the uh, Los Vecinos, Cornwell neighborhood community area, which is the map is here, and these are going to be important here in a few minutes, um, and the North 14 neighborhood community area. And basically, we're just using the interstate, and one side of the interstate is one, and the other side of the interstate is the other. There's a community center in each one. Um, anyway, so that was kind of the basis for looking at, at those different, or d sort of d defining those different NCAs. So these are some of the things that we heard um, at, through the community process. And I mean, feel free to chime in if there are things that were omitted. Um, but these are just, this is kind of just like a snapshot. There's a more in detail uh, um, rendition of this in the plan itself. Um, there seemed to be uh, a desire for a number of trail connections that connect. We have uh, several open space resources between the county, the city, and the Forest Service. How do we connect them better, together better? I think that's, that was kind of the, the message we got in a number of different uh, you know, forms. Um, and the, one of the other things we heard often is we're not, out in the East Mountains, we're not so interested in neighborhood parks uh, as perhaps other parts of the county uh, or the city, but we do like our open spaces and we would like some amenities now, I mean, uh, that are more park-like perhaps in, in our open spaces or at our community center. So we can do some of the same things we would do at a neighborhood park in the city, but we, you know, but we do it in our you know, context that's more fitting of the East Mountains. So. Um, and then we also got a lot of questions or comments about open spaces not being completely open or completed in terms of development. So Carlito Springs, when's that gonna be done? Um, Cedillo Ridge, um, you, know, you guys have had it for a while. We don't really have any way to you know, park our vehicles or do anything with it at this point. So, so those are important things. Then in terms of aquatics, um, and we've already got a, had a comment about this. We had, there was a long-term, there's been a number of uh, folks over time who have expressed desire for a swimming pool. Um, long, basically, people living in the East Mountains have the longest distance to go to to get to an aquatics facility, period. So it's an issue. Uh, but we also, you know, I mean, and, and we can get into this a little bit more, but really the, the issue for us is a water systems issue uh, and cost. So. If we were to have a, a swimming pool here in Los, at, you know, in Tijeras, we would have to redo the Tijeras water system to accommodate the backwash flow for for the swimming pool. So, so not only do we have the cost of building a pool, which is huge, but we're going to have the cost of retrofitting the system. So that's that's the reason why we haven't been able to do that. So sure. So two 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 things I heard. One is is that um, can we do something with some of the other municipalities or counties in, in, in collaboration. Um, and the second is looking at one of the mutual domestic water systems and talking to them about doing something. Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm open to it. I mean, I, up to this point, again, I mean, I'm thinking you're gonna have the same issue with a smaller, you know, like an entrenos the entrenosis of the world because I think if the Tijeras system can't handle the, the, that amount of water coming and going, I mean, without, I mean, even, basically, we were going to overtax the system completely. I mean, we couldn't, we were going to shut it down. So that's, but I can, we can look into it. That That's what I was told. We had somebody do a study about five years ago uh, when it was Commissioner, then Commissioner Brasher asked us to look at this. And the we, the proverbial, I wasn't part of the we at that point. But, I mean, you know, but that was, that was what was determined at that point. Um, the other possibility, you know, Paco has a, does have a swimming pool, but I mean, we would have to get the water rights, dig a really enormous well. We know how people feel about, I mean, again, you're talking about lots and lots of water to make this work, so. Exactly how much water, it's not, because it's not like they empty, empty a pool every day. I mean, like they're kind of maintaining water and doing some cleaning, but it's not like. We basically empty out about a third of it, you know, at one point during the day. 
which is usually in the middle of the night. Yeah, this is the way this water system cycles for in order for it to function. I don't. I mean, I can get you more of the details offline, but that's the issue. I mean, as I understand it, because when we do that big pulse, doesn't matter when we do it, it sucks the whole system, and then puts a whole lot of water into the the sewage end of the system, and that's what's in, that's what basically T. Harris said. <laughs> You know, you're going to have to redo our water system if you want to do something like that. We can do, we could do like a splash park, which is not the same thing as a swimming pool. We know, we've heard in all parts of our community about that. But that's something we can look at doing. We can handle that here. But we, but in terms, until we get a, a bigger water system online, yeah. it would be very difficult. I to mean, the, the same reasons are. I mean, I know it's going to cost a lot of money, but the same reasons are everything that you've just said. Our youth need to know how to swim. And having 50 mile round trips to swimming pools, you know, that's a long ways. And many people would kind of put off having their children learn to swim, which is really a critical life skill. Yes. Um, I mean, I'm just saying it's a critical life skill. You don't want your kid to drown in Carlito Springs. No, right. <laughs> but, you know, right. you just, wanna, you just sure. want to do that. And then as the aging population goes, like, um, you know, water aquatics. And Water I know there's a program out here that says, oh, you know, we'll bust you down to UNM. But for people who are disabled, that's actually pretty uncomfortable. And then thirdly, the whole thing is, is you can also like be, by having a pool out here, lower the carbon footprint of the huge amount of traffic and all the dangers that go to taking people from the East Mountains into the city for recreational life skills and health and welfare. I mean, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. And But, you know, maybe there's some technology out of there where as you pull that water out of a pool, it goes through a water treatment on site and can go back into the pool. I mean, er, I think there's options that might be, I mean, like there's super geniuses out there that yeah. can do that, right? No. <laughs> so, <laughs> But it, it just does seem, and mm -hmm. so I just kind of want to raise it. It's not a frivolous recreational thing. It's actually important, everything that you've said as far as health and welfare of mm -hmm. the East Mountain people. Absolutely. And frankly, it's pretty dang dangerous going through that canyon sometimes. And we do pay our share of property taxes out here as well. So just want to put a strong push on that. No, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate. I also appreciate you trying to frame it in, in terms of sustainability in a different way. Like, there's all this travel going on, um, and, and in terms of the carbon footprint, I think that's great. But I, um, anyway. Um, but I understand expense, but I still want to put that forward very strongly. Well, that's fine. I mean, and I mean, and please, when we do the dot, make that dot you can, the dot game, which is at the very end. Oh, you have. You, you weren't here at the very beginning to get oh, the. No, I'm sorry. The spiel. It's okay. It's okay. I was but I'm lost. gonna go. I'm gonna go through the the, the the whole the whole exercise in it. But feel free to write in, you know, East Mountain Pool, and put and put your dot or dots there. And I think that's. I mean, that's totally. And it is one of the things we're hearing from all our community areas: the importance of aquatics. Um, they are the most, as you heard in the video, they are the most expensive pieces. So we may have to look at other revenue sources. And I think that's. And you know and. That's controversial, right? Yeah, um, but it is just pretty obvious yeah. that it's all in that corridor on the west side of the mountains, <laughs> where all the water is. Right, right. But I mean, I mean, what is uh, the long-term solution is going to be? Is going to need to be one that really we're going to have to potentially have a funding stream that's that's consistent that ha brings in a large amount of money. And if the community really, really wants that, I mean, are they willing to pay a little more in taxes across the board? And that's the question because we don't. We only have so much, you know, money to take care of all the other, th all the other resources. That's and so that's, and if so, well, let's do it. I mean, I mean, I, that's my perspective. I'm just I'm down here. And there's you know three or four tiers above me, but I mean you know in terms of the county management, and then there's the commission that would make that decision. That's not my decision to make. But I'm just saying. It's just well, that's true. And I I was you know like you kind of raised a question in my brain when you were talking earlier about developers. Is it true for the developers that are out here also? that they have to have something in the pot for um, parks and recreation out mm -hmm. here as part of the plan. So if there's big developments going in out here in the East Mountains, which it tends to actually be more patchy, but mm -hmm. do, they, do they do that? Yes, I mean, they all pay impact. In fact, the largest <laughs> chunk of impact fees in the last few years 
prior to the moratorium going into effect came from, it was in the East Mountains. Uh, and then in terms of, but yeah, they would, much like Santa Lina is going through this development process, if there was a large master plan community, um, same thing. They would have to, if there was a Paco coming through now, for example, or a, a Campbell Ranch, they would have to go through the same, you know, okay, process. Okay, that's good. I'm so, glad to hear that. Yeah. yeah. So, the, and, and part of that would be, okay, you, you know, our community does expect aquatics facilities, so you're going to have to figure out how to do something. You know, you may not, I mean, if you're going to have another 40,000 people out here, that's two aquatics facilities. So, you know. Yep. So, anyway. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, just to jump back, and I'll, I'll be like Jerry, <laughs> like a county version of Jerry Springer. Maybe not quite so aggressive, or maybe it's a bad analog. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, so I guess we can go on to the next slide. Um, in terms of community centers, uh, we definitely, wow, that's interesting how that's coming in. Cool. Um, we know we have a number of issues here to address at Los Vecinos, and um, we, these came up through the, the we had a, a, a two-day charrette process here, um, and, you know, so we really need, we know we have a number of things we, we would like to address here. We're looking at a major renovation to this facility, not just a little addition. It would, and it basically, this area is, I don't know, for, for many of you may know this, this was originally a fire station right here. You can actually, certain times of the day, light, you can actually see the tire tracks and the, from where the, <laughs> the fire engines went, uh, where they parked, so right here in the floor. So th the slab is very old. The whole situation here is, is, is a very old piece of infrastructure that's been kind of reconfigured and readapted, but it, it's time to really do the job that needs to be done and, and do something. And we also have all these beautiful views we can do something that's more sustainable. How do we, I mean, we have this huge mountain right here that defines where we live, all of us, and the whole center kind of turns itself away from it. And I'm a designer, so I think about things like that. But, but it is, it's what it means to be here, right? You know, right here. So anyway, um, so there's some things that really, we really need to focus on here. Vista Grande is our, is our, is our second newest facility. Um, there are some things we need to address there, probably not the, quite the, you know, it's not like what we need to deal with here. Anyway, uh, these are some of the things that came up relative to parks. Uh, we've been, uh, again, I, I mentioned the whole issue, between, the, the, the connection between open spaces and parks uh, here is a little different. Prescription trails, we'd like to see more, you know, more of those, all our facilities having them. Um, and I think also, I mean, there was, we want to eventually develop the McGrain site. It was going to become a memorial. The, the whole process is now kind of on a longer, you know, um, memorial. It's gone through, there's now a memorial committee that's deciding that. But at some point, it will also be a facility of some kind, I'm sure. And the way we're looking at the, well, I'll, I'll show a plan in just a sec that will explain all this. Um, this is just our basically our overall approach. Um, oops, one of those is a, has been recycled from another presentation. We don't have the Alameda drain corridor up here, but uh, linking among our facilities will be key. Um, this is uh, Los, I'm sorry, Vista Grande. Uh, one of the things that we've, here's the school, here's the community center, here's East Mountain Little League, here's the soccer field. Um, we'd like, to, they'd like to have this somehow have a track around it. We're not quite sure how that's gonna work just yet. We know we have some parking issues here. You know, some building issues. We've also heard about a second gym, possibly, uh, an, a, an, a much upgraded playground. We're thinking even possibly you know, a fully inclusive playground. We'd like to have one of those in each of our districts eventually, and this might would be the location. And a number of improvements to the to the little league area, just so that we can deal with some of the maintenance, ongoing maintenance issues there, and make it really kind of like a a, a regional facility. Yes, sir. Like, we would like to see some, uh, there is a sport called uh, uh, pickleball. Uh, pickleball? Pickleball. It's okay. A, it's a new sport. It's a new, uh, it's the fastest growing sport uh, in the United States. Uh, it has been, existed since 1960, but it grow now uh, over half a million people that are playing pickleball. 
Okay. And it's it's uh, become very, very widely spread all over uh, Arizona, California, Florida, uh, Washington, Seattle. Uh, it become really a big sport. And it came to Albuquerque about five years ago. Mm -hmm. And we are we started like with uh, 20, 20 or 25, and now we are over 800 people who play pickleball. And we don't have any faci permanent facilities for pickleball. Mm. So <clears throat> uh, we play pickleball here in winter, indoor, yes. We have two courts, and we, the seniors, mostly uh, 50 and over, uh, the ages, and they come Monday and Wednesday and, and Fridays. Mm -hmm. And you have two courts, and there are like 25 people waiting to play into two courts. And each court takes only four players. Mm. So, and uh, the other facilities they helped us is the gym at Rossfield Middle School. Mm -hmm. And we, we play there, and we have about 200 people to play the whole month. Wow. And it is very, it's a very easy sport. And everybody plays it, and uh, it doesn't take uh, too much effort and easy to learn. And uh, we, we, I went uh, last year to Fista Grande to ask if we can use the gym there. They said no, we don't have, we don't have time because mm -hmm. it's all fully booked. Right. And then we came back again here, so we don't have any facilities for pickleball. Mm. So if it's possible, if you are going to make a plan for for Fista Grande there or, or hmm. some other facilities to include pickleball, at least two or three courts, permanent courts for pickleball only. Permanent courts? Yes, okay. permanent courts. Okay. All right. So, but basically what you need is gym space, but indoor yes. space. Yes. As opposed to outdoor space, so outdoor space doesn't work as well. well it is outdoor, outdoor. It's in the so, summer. So now at Paradise Hills, they play outdoors. Sometimes yes. on our, our we court. play at Los Altos. At Los Altos, summer, okay. In the summer. Okay. In winter, we play mainly at Roswell, but we compete with the with the school children. You know, the, the, sure. So they have they have the more priority than uh, on, on during us. the okay. So before we used to use it like from five o'clock until seven, and now they have a special class. And they go from seven to nine. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, they go from five to seven, and then we go, we occupy the facilities from seven to nine. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we appreciate if we can include uh, pickable sport in the in the program. Sure. Uh, for the future. Well, and again, feel free when we do this part of the program if you want to write in pickleball courts, you yes. know, for you know. North okay. 14 or Los Vecinos area, feel free to do that as you Thank you. Thank so, you very much. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Moving on, actually gonna bounce out one further here too. This is this is the the kind of overall plan for the Los Vecinos cluster of facilities. So here's the community center. These are the two schools. Uh, up here are the, all the Tijeras facilities. Uh, this is the Tijeras Arroyo. Uh, this part actually is owned by the county up to about right here, and then it's owned by the land grant. Uh, the two the, the forks are. Um, the, idea, the, gen the idea that the plan puts forth is looking at this as possibly an open space. Of course, I should say Steve Glass is here uh, from Ciudad. And they're working on a restoration, have been working on a restoration project in this area right here uh, for a number of years. So anyway, the idea would be to kind of develop this and have a, a key thing being that it, there's a, a trail that links all the way over to Carli the bottom of Carlito Springs, comes all the way across the site, comes through McGrain, all the way over to the ranger station, the Forest Service. So it would connect you know, all our kind of little pieces together in, in one complex and then for kids again you know at Los Vecinos they could then go f to all these different places or there could be I mean it's a long walk to Carlito from Los Vecinos but for the older kids or for some programming it might be it might make sense but just that we could have that connection oh really oh really okay fabulous 
So anyway, there's, I mean, there's pieces of it that are in place. So this would just make it a much nicer corridor. And then the thought is eventually, this, because this is right now owned by and maintained by Public Works, so this actually might be, you know, in collaboration with CO Dodd and some of our other partners, might actually become an open space, uh, another open space resource for us. So The speed is 35 miles an hour. I'm going to tell you not everybody does that. And so I just think it's important to think about kids and more people crossing that street. And, and really, and put flashers, make it, and then sort of narrow that. Right now, it's like designed, engineered to be this. Is it not on? OK, anyway. But I mean, that's, that's, that was the idea. Is, so that, that is a major focus of the, of the plan. So those are just some of the things that are proposed in the plan. Um, this is a list of the projects that are in the plan. Um, and this is also in the survey. And so for those of you, how many of you have taken the survey online? Nobody's taken the survey online. Wow, this is the first meeting. But I mean, there's a lot of people have taken it in East Mountains. I just assumed everybody who showed up tonight would have taken it. But so, OK, well, that's great. So everybody here needs to take the survey online. Can you all agree to do that? Yes? OK, awesome. Thank you. Uh, so now, and. So question two is really much what we're actually about to embark on you know, as a group here uh, in, in terms of prioritizing the projects. You have an opportunity to say which are the three most important projects. And notice down below, for those of you who still want, want to talk about the swimming pool, you can write in swimming pool under other. And, and that could be one of your three projects. So anyway, so that's, that's that really, I mean, I, I I actually, the next slide, I think, is the segue into the, oh, OK, there's the funding of the plan. I already kind of talked about this, but this just gives you a visual to that. We get about 37.5 million every six years if you include three bond cycles. And what facilities are most important because we can't fund them all. And so this is where we'll segue into the, the interactive part, unless there are other questions. So I'm happy to take more questions. Or comments too. I'm going to have some when might Cedillo Ridge uh, be opened or be available? Are you finished with the cutting? We will be finished yeah. shortly, right? Yeah, I'm not actually sure because Lisa Powell, um, our Lisa Powell, our resource specialist, is overseeing that project, so I, I'm not actually sure um, when it's proposed to wrap up, but. I know that they are still actively doing cutting, and because it is such a large property, 500 acres, it's in phases. Um, we are working with the um, New Mexico State uh, Forestry um, Division as well as uh, Ciudad. Um, and so I, I think we still have a little ways to go. And then the next phase after that, um, as we have in our resource management plans laid out, um, will be to first do the trailhead and then the actual trail. So that will also take some time. So we're not, uh, we're not there yet. So what is your timeline for new deadline? Well, one of the, we will know a better probably later in the fall. We're figuring out how our open space mill levy funding is going to be structured. So it's one of the projects. And again, you should appear. You can identify that as a priority project. That will help us to know that's a priority. Uh, from the community standpoint, we'll bring that forward in the plan. I think that the issue is just for us is for, we're, we just got the mill levy. We're figuring out. We're still going through a process of figuring out how we're going to be spending the mill levy, what chunk of it's going to be used for O&M, what chunk is going to be used for development, what chunk is going to be used for acquisition. And that's going to be a, a commission decision. At some point, I'm thinking probably by September, we'll have, if, it may even go forward with this plan because there's been a lot of discussion about it, and, um, and it's being, there, there is a kind of an idea of what we're going to do, but it's not finalized yet. I can't really share it. I'm not even party to the whole conversation. I will yeah. say, though, in regards to funding, actually, um, we are getting money from Ciudad um, to fund the fuel thinning, which fuel is thinning, really yeah. wonderful. But the, the trail is a whole other uh, yeah. part that we would have to front. And I don't know, Steve, do you know the timeline um, with the fuel thinning? Um, we have, oh, okay. The fuel thinning timeline for Cedillo, as I understand it, is uh, uh, we probably will finish it up in July or August. We're moving some of the funds that were available into the next fiscal year. 
but uh, we're making really good, uh, really good progress. Those guys are fast in the field. So uh, we sh I, I believe that uh, at least the available funding we have from uh, State Forestry uh, for, for, for this go-round, we're going to spend that out by uh, July or August. Whether or not that finishes the fuel thinning at Cedillo, I, I can't say that because it is in a large area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, the funding that we do have, and I, I should say that Bernalillo County has contributed a significant amount um, to two uh, contributions of about $45,000 each. So, uh, so there's some funding and we're making some progress. I know this seems like an odd question coming from a somewhat rural community out here, but are there going to be community gardens associated with any of your um, visitor centers or open spaces out here? Uh, we were proposing it as part of the, right, this is in the plan for Right here, possibly, or right in here, uh, as part of uh, the community center, just to incorporate it again from a programming standpoint, and maybe be more of a, a productive. I mean, right now, my, I'm also connected to a Montessori middle school that's coming online in the next two years, and they're using their kids. Act, the, the, the kid, middle school kids in a Montessori framework need to be active. And so what they're talking about, teens and tween, early teens or tweens, so they, the Montessori models, you, you, they become an entrepreneurial group. So they are actually going to run a, a farm on vacant lots in the area where the Montessori school is as a way. And so that's part of their, anyway, so I've, all I've, where I was going with this is maybe this could be part of the programming for the center. It'd be kind of a different way of thinking about it. I'm not a programmer at the center or for the center. But anyway, it's, it, could be, it could become something that's more than just a programming thing. Will they work in the programming of Carlitos Springs? I mean, they had a great day, um, seems like it was just last month, where they allowed, you know, opened the gate for people who had uh, mobility issues to be able to drive to the top and experience it. Um, are, are you all going to put that in as part of your per permanent programming to have that um, advertised every once in a while or once a month to we talk to that? <laughs> um, <laughs> So we will at least um, twice a year have those uh, available days where we'll open up the gate and allow people with mobility issues to get to the top of Carlito Springs. Um, right now, you can drive halfway up there and there's a new parking lot trailhead and you then have to hike two miles to get up to the top where the houses and the springs and pools are. So, um, and we did that very thoughtfully. We didn't want to allow everybody to be able to drive to the very top because we were afraid of vandalism issues and what have you. We don't have a caretaker living there, but that is in the plan. And so uh, until we're able to open the actual facilities up there full time, um, we will have the twice a year um, access. And then um, in the request for proposals that is going out for Carlito Springs, accessibility is something that we are looking for for the houses that are at the top there. Um, it would, there would still have to be somebody opening up the gate to allow people in, but that could be arranged more once we do have a caretaker in there. So, you know, we're not quite there yet as far as offering it more year-round for groups and for people, um, but in the future, hopefully that will be the case, and we are definitely considering those things as we are working on the request for proposals and, and planning for um, that phase two development at Carlito. Thank you, Colleen. I'm really glad you're here tonight to explain all these things and finer details than I would be able to. So this is great. Um, I think because it is 7:30 and we'd like to get everybody out of here by eight, let's let's segue to that last part of the program. Um, and so on the back of your agendas, there are three dots. Um, there's a blue dot. Um, would have been. There's a blue dot, a red dot, and a yellow dot. And the blue dot is for your first priority. Um, so you basically would place that, I think I have actually an illustration here, um, next to uh, the project, and it'll be listed here. It'll probably, there's an icon that relates to most of these things here, but main thing is look at, read, you know, the, what's called the CIP chart, which is right here. So there's a list of projects. There's a list here for Los Vecinos. Uh, there's a list for Cedillo Ridge, uh, Sunflower Park. Um, there's a couple other items on there. Um, and then here, these are for all, for Vista Grande and uh, Carlito 
and some of the other properties that we have north of I-40 are here. So one dot per project. So you'll have to place dots on three different projects, but tell us which one's the most important. Well, welcome back. We're just going to have, have a couple more slides here, and I can also take a couple more questions if there are any. But first, um, just sort of looking at what the, the outcome of the, uh, the dot game in this instance was here tonight. Um, we'll go to this map. It looks like a number of people are very interested in, in the completion of the Carlito Springs open space development. There's also some, a, a group of people here for the, the soft service trail connections uh, from Carlito to Ojito, and then it would be the, what we call the, um, no, the power line trail. There's one dot for the power line trail. That's a separate. And then here, uh, in terms of the pickleball courts and the Tejeras Creek restoration, so there's sort of little clusters. Uh, over here, the East Mountain Pool uh, is the largest cluster, and then, uh, and then studio open space, getting that open, it looks like, is really uh, key. So that's, um, that's very helpful. That's what we need to hear from the community tonight. Um, I hope you all can go back online and fill out a survey and tell all your neighbors and friends to do it. Okay, I'm gonna give you a website here if anybody wants to take it down. Um, but basically, again, just to go through, I've mentioned this, where we are in the process. We're, we're doing the district meetings. We have one more tomorrow night if anybody wants to come to the South Valley meeting or you know down in South, encourage them to come. Um, we have some coordination meetings going on with the city next week uh, with uh, U.S. Forest Service, the guy, those guys that left already. Um, AMAFCA, MRGCD, and APS at some point. Um, we, don't, we haven't set a meeting time for that one. Um, we're gonna, the next step is really to complete what we call the financial analysis, which is the last section of the, of the uh, draft uh, plan, which we haven't really done. And it's really going to focus on the priority projects, that first six years worth of projects, if you will. Um, then we'll be going through a final staff review, uh, Colleen and Ed and Lisa and our center managers, Diane, um, who else is here? Well, JR has left, um, but everybody will be giving it once more or once over um, in terms of the plan. And then we'll finalize the plan document. We'll be then going forward uh, to the commission for, hopefully for adoption, but certainly for action in August. Uh, so that'll be August, the August 11th commission meeting. So, um, so that's kind of the, the process going forward. Um, we have, as I've indicated, one more meeting, um, but I also just wanted to alert you to, that's really hard to read, the website, and I'll turn off the lights one more time, burnco.gov, just remember Bernie, burnco.gov, Parks Recreation Master Plan. Um, if you, the agenda you don't the it, is on, it is on the agenda as well, that's correct. So if you go on there or you send your friends there, they, they can do the survey, it's really obvious, and you'll do the survey for District 5 in this case, if they live elsewhere. Um, they can also put pickleball in in another survey. So if there's somebody else lives someplace else, I mean, you know, or swimming pools. And, well, we're getting lots of input about swimming pools elsewhere. But anyway, anyway, I just I don't need to say that. Anyway, thank you all uh, for your feedback. Thank you all for helping us prioritize projects. Uh, and thank you all, the gang from county, being here to support this effort. So anyway, thanks. Thank you very much.